welcome to the Freeland Writer's Eye Spotlight Talks for YouTube. Before we begin, I encourage you to use these videos interactively. When you are prompted to observe, pause the video and look carefully. When the educator asks a question, feel free to pause the video again and discuss your observations and ideas, making sure to address what you see that makes you say that. We're excited to share these videos with you and read your writer's eye entries. Enjoy. Let's take a few minutes to observe this busy painting by Roy DeForest. There is a lot happening. Let your eye move freely around the image, noticing colors, shapes, and lines. Focus on the work as a whole. What do you notice about the composition? Identify areas of more and less density. Let's now pick two or three areas to observe in greater detail. What do you see? What do you observe about the use of color? What do you notice about the shapes, the lines? In my observation, this painting is dense with marks, patterns, organic shapes of various sizes, and repeated lines and colors. The repetition of lines and curved shapes creates a kind of rhythm throughout, helping to guide my eye. While the shapes are mostly abstracted, some of them remind me of electrical circuits, railroad tracks, or trails seen from a bird's eye view. The large dark green and black shape occupying the lower left corner of the painting is particularly interesting to me. Some of the shapes remind me of a park, perhaps a playing field with a pond and playground. Another shape occupies the upper left corner of the picture, suggesting rounded red lips. The forest outlined the red shape in black with eight loose vertical black lines intersected by another black horizontal line. Throughout the painting, there are also sets of concentric circles, circles within circles, and smaller shapes superimposed with grids. The use of color in this painting is also of interest to me. The forest repeated colors, like red and green, and also interspersed the painting with dots that almost create a visual texture. I wonder, what colors do you see repeated? How does DeForest move your eye around the painting? What details interest you? One of the details that jumps out at me is the gray shape along the upper right edge of the picture. I wonder if that's supposed to be a hand, and if so, is it counting to three? I think the shapes, colors, patterns, and textures create a frenetic energy. What about you? How would you describe the mood or feeling that you have when observing this painting? DeForest said his paintings were, quote, unknowable, though hauntingly familiar, end quote. I like that he lets us use our imagination to interpret his paintings. What might this be? Is it a map? Organisms seen through a microscope? What do you think? DeForest also described himself as, quote, an eccentric individual creating fantasy art with the amazing intention of totally building a miniature cosmos into which the artful alchemist could retire with all his friends, animals, and paraphernalia, end quote. How might the title, Give Me the Baton Maestro, be related to your observations? If you turned on the sound in this painting, what might you hear? I have so many questions about this work of art. I want to know more about the artist. Was he a musician? What questions do you have about this artwork or the artist Roy DeForest? 
When I was reading about and researching this work of art, I found that Roy Dean DeForest was born in North Platte, Nebraska in 1930 into a family of migrant farm workers. As a child, he lived all over the country as his parents moved to find farm work. Nebraska, Colorado, and Washington State. He spent most of his childhood on a farm in Yakima Valley, an agricultural community in eastern Washington, and the territory of the indigenous Yakima Nation. As an adult, DeForest mainly lived and worked in the San Francisco Bay Area. He studied art at the California School of Fine Arts and San Francisco State College, and then taught at the University of California at Davis. When I was learning about his artistic process, I found that Roy DeForest experimented with combinations of materials and techniques. He often put sand, rocks, and other textural materials into his acrylic paints. It's hard to see from a computer screen, but do you notice any areas of interesting texture in this painting? When this was on view at the Fraylin a few years ago, I noticed the texture of the dots. They really stick out from the canvas. DeForest claimed that, quote, rather than, say, taking an image and then finding a way to express it in paint, sometimes I think about how to use paint and then find an image that fits it, end quote. DeForest adhered to the idea that his work must contain a great deal of variety, such as shape and size differences, marks, color, paint techniques, texture, and subject matter. The raised dots characteristic in his work were often produced by squeezing paint directly from paint tubes onto the canvas. Although he was primarily a painter, DeForest worked in other media as well. Sculpture, printmaking, pastel and ink on paper, and mixed media assemblages. Remember how DeForest described his artistic process as, quote, creating a miniature cosmos, end quote? What descriptive language might you use to describe this invented world? We're all looking forward to the day when we can gather safely at the museum. Until then, please reach out to the Education Department with any questions or feedback. Our email is museumoutreach at virginia.edu.